So um, welcome to this LSE online event hosted by the LSE European Institute um, as part of its new series Beyond Eurocentrism that we are launching today um, and also in the context of the LSE shaping the post-COVID world series. My name is Angelo Martelli and I am an assistant professor in European International Political Economy here at the LSE. I'm delighted to chair today's conversation um, on growth and solidarity cities reimagining human mobility in Africa and Europe. Um, cities are today at the forefront of global action with mayors um, working together and leading the way to find innovative and workable solutions to global challenges such as COVID-19 pandemic and its recovery, combating climate change and fostering green economy. The Mayor's Dialogue uh, is a platform for mayors across Africa and Europe uh, to work together in practical ways to address the reality of human mobility in urban settings. I am therefore delighted to welcome our speakers today, the Mayor of Freetown, uh, Yvonne Aki Sawyer, and the Mayor of Milan, Giuseppe Sala, who both initiated this initiative. Um, and thank you for joining us. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing from you both uh, about your vision for the dialogue and what you hope to achieve. Let me also welcome our other speakers, Marta Foresti, who is director of ODI Europe, who is actually working closely with the mayors and CDs to deliver the dialogue. And Professor Ricky Burdett, director of LSE CDs, will be responding to the initiative uh, in the broader context of city-led action around the world. So for those Twitter users in the audience, the hashtag for today's event is LSE Eurocentrism, one word, and LSE COVID-19, uh, also one word. Um, this, L, this online event uh, is actually being recorded and will hopefully be made available as a podcast subject to no technical difficulties. As usual, there will be the chance for you to put your questions to the speakers. Um, to submit your questions, please use the um, Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, questions will be submitted to myself um, and I will pose as many as possible to the speakers please um, let us know your name and affiliation. So let me uh, introduce briefly our first two speakers, the mayors. Um, I start with uh, Mayor Aki Sawyer. Um, she has been mayor of Freetown, Sierra Leone since May, 2018. Um, she's a former finance professional with over 25 years of private sector experience. And among the many achievements um, from January 2016 to October 2017, she actually served as the delivery team lead for the president's recovery priorities for the second phase of a multi-stakeholder program to drive socioeconomic re recovery in Sierra Leone post Ebola. Mayor, uh, Mayor Aki Sawyer, I'm delighted that uh, she's an LSE alumna um, and holds also an MSc in politics of the world economy from the LSE. Um, then let me move to Mayor Giuseppe Sala, who has been Mayor of Milan since 2016. From 2010 to 2015, he was CEO uh, as well as Government Commissioner for the 2015 Universal Exposition in Milan. And he has previously also held um, leading roles in major companies in the private sector. Now, um, let me start by actually um, going to our speakers, opening the floor. And I'll start with uh, my first question. Um, and my first question is, can you tell us how the mayor's dialogue came about and what he wants to achieve? So Mayor Aki Sawyer, uh, the floor is yours first. Thank you very much, Angelo, um, and great to be here. Um, yes, as an LSE alumnus, really glad to be participating in this event. Um, how did the mayor's dialogue come about? Well, Mayor Giuseppe and myself are both members of the Mayor's Migration Council. We're both on the leadership board of that council, a council which was set up really with a vision to have mayors from across the world join their voices um, in pushing forward advocacy in ensuring that the global compact of migration is influenced and implemented in a manner that makes sense for those who are at the forefront um, of dealing with irregular migration or migration generally. Um, it was in that context 
a context which recognizes that although they are very often left out or had been left out of the policy making, it is mayors, it is city leaders who deal with migration, whether from the perspective of Mayor Giuseppe, who is a mayor of a city of destination, or um, myself, a mayor of a city of origin, when it comes for when it comes to um, international migration, but I'm also a city of a mayor of destination when it comes to rural migration. These are very complex, these have big um, impacts on our communities, on our cities, and we have to deal with the housing, with the sanitation, with the water provision, etc. but very often our voices are not heard um, because the international settings in which these conversations are held tend to focus on national voices. So the Mayor's Migration Council is all about ac um, accentuating, amplifying the voices of cities so that the best can be done for migration. Now, on that same point, as we met together, Mayor Giuseppe and myself, we got into a conversation with other colleagues about how negative the narrative around migration has become in contrast to the reality of what history has shown us. What history has shown us is that migration has often fueled growth. It's often added and enriched cities. Um, it's often been a catalyst for further economic development. But in today's society, it has become almost a bad word. The word migrant um, is associated with so much that's negative. And um, as a city of origin, we also find a situation where people fail to recognize what is lost when migration is done in an irregular fashion. So the mayor's dialogue is, was, was conceived from the viewpoint of being able to capitalize on the positive history of migration and to frame an engagement which will allow the best of migration to come forward. Africa and Europe, two continents next to each other where the issue of migration has, has created so much animosity, so much negative emotion, and yet there are opportunities. And at the city level, we believe that we can work together as cities to make migration something which allows opportunities to flourish, to very practically work together in a manner in which we can develop test and scale innovative ideas because the people who are coming to Milan, the people who are leaving Freetown or Dakar or Banjul, the people who are leaving Makeni or Kenema in my case, in terms of internal migration have something to offer, but it's how, the, they're, how they're received and how this process is worked on that will enable us to get the most out of it. And on the flip side, of course, we also want to ensure that objective one of the Global Compact on Migration, which says that we need to address the structural drivers of migration. Why are people moving? Whether it's climate change, whether it's economic depri deprivation, whether it's just simply wanting, I mean, I came to London and went to the LSE. Was I a migrant? Would you call me a migrant then or a migrant today? People want to, explore, develop themselves personally? How do we as city leaders work together to ensure that this can be done in a manner which actually in, um, in, uh, impacts our cities positively, gives youth, young people, those migrating, positive experiences, work with partnerships in the private sector, other policy organization, uh, policy making organizations so that the narrative of migration becomes a more positive one. So we want to develop, test and scale innovative ideas. We want to make sure that we are uh, um, doing this in a manner which brings other cities into the conversation, other partners into the conversation and we make it practical. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mayor Arti Sawyer. Um, for this first introduction to the mayor's dialogue and uh, what he wants to achieve. I'll now move on to uh, Mayor Sala um, for your contribution. Yes, thank you, Professor Martelli, and thank you, dear Yvonne. When Mayor Sawyer and I met uh, 
at the first mayor migration council leadership board meeting, we did not know each other, nor our city had an ongoing uh, city to city collaboration as uh, Milan has with several African cities and uh, Free Town with other European uh, cities. So it is remarkable how quickly we found uh, each other expressing the very same commitments and concerns during uh, our discussion with fellow mayors. I recall uh, both of us saying, uh, first, we want our city to be open and welcoming. We want it to be attractive for young people, for to those who look uh, for a place uh, to make uh, their lives, to create something. And we want people to stay and contribute to feel at home. This philosophy of duties and rights, it's at the base of uh, the functioning, the vision of my city. Then at the first sight, one could think that Milano and Freetown do not have much in common. And there we were, both of us, feeling uh, to allies. So going from unknown peers to like-minded partners on an equal footing. There was uh, no way we could avoid discussing uh, the tragedy and the sense of ethnicism, the too many deaths in the Mediterranean of the too many lives lost. So we talk about um, how the whole narrative, as uh, Yvonne said before, on migration, migration from Africa to Europe was uh, skewed on a negative uh, and misleading. And from there, it did not take uh, much for us uh, to feel that we wanted to portray a different narrative on human mobility between uh, our two continents, not only our cities, but our continent, and that we wanted to do together. As now, as concrete uh, as mayor always said, we felt there was an enormous potential in contributing existing and newly initiated city co city collaboration results. We felt this would enrich uh, the dialogue between the two continents and we were lucky, lucky enough to find partners to support us and uh, to elevate. Uh, our vision. We also knew that uh, there are very committed fellow mayors, and this point is absolutely fundamental. So you cannot imagine how in the world there are so committed uh, mayors absolutely ready to, to move on. And the mayor interested in portraying a different narrative, building uh, on city long-standing collaboration with other cities. So now we are a group of peers that gets uh, stronger with any new mayor coming along. And in, in some way, this is a rule. If you are a new mayor, you come along, you are with us, you are peer, but we ask, are asking you, we will ask you a contribution. Now, the motto, growth and solidarity, came about uh, during the first uh, conversation as I was presenting my credo for my city of Milan, was, it was the, the motto of my electoral campaign uh, five years ago. And I believe we need both growth and solidarity to ensure a functioning and livable city. And again, this is a fundamental point. One is not sufficient. We have to, to work on both sides. Then honestly, the shocking impact of the pandemic has further convinced me and us that extra efforts are needed to support growth and to share its results. In the end, the idea of this initiative came about when we spoke about the, our cities and realized, as it often happens among mayors, that we have a lot in common. We share goals and concerns and absolutely fundamental. We learn a lot when we share ideas and experiences. Human mobility is one of the things we have in common, a reality 
in cities all over the world. And let me give you an example. While Italy, my country, has around 9% of foreign-born residents on average, my city, Milano, in my city, Milano, the proportion is 20% and it works. So as mayors, we must work together and learn from each other to work with this reality and to make it work. Crucially, as mayor, we work for all our residents. In our partnership with other cities, we find that innovative and practical solution that work for all. From, uh, for instance, facilitating access uh, to fundamental health services and education, to support meaningful integration into the labor market, issue which will become even more fundamental now, uh, but for local uh, youth and newcomers. Now, again, growth and solidarity are the two sides of the same coin. And we need people to move uh, safely and to fulfill their aspiration and potential so that our cities in Europe, in Africa, everywhere, local economies and societies can develop sustainable, sustainably and justly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Sala. Um, actually, I have another question for you, which is um, we are in the midst of a pandemic. Um, we have seen a first wave, uh, at least in the uh, in Europe, a second wave uh, rushing probably. So why do we need this dialogue now? And how, in your view, is it different from also other city-led platforms? Right, because when we started working on this uh, just a few months ago, we were living uh, in a different world. Uh, we told we would meet and discuss and engage other mayors bilaterally or multilaterally, taking advantage on the few occasions in which uh, we as mayor take uh, time off in some way from our immediate duties in our cities to meet uh, internationally and exchange ideas. Now, this is, has not been possible because this uh, past month we have been uh, hard and extremely busy for all mayor and continue to be challenging uh, as the situation is still uh, very delicate and worrisome. But we agree on the need to build back better and this is fundamental. We cannot imagine to, to build back in a sort of business as usual. Uh, build back, back a better, again, is another our motto in some way. And uh, this is one reason to do our utmost to achieve what we committed to with this dialogue. We share the belief that cities uh, with an inclusive approach have a greater chance uh, to build back better. When cities uh, tailor their plans on the need, uh, of the most vulnerable, they also make uh, them work for everybody else. In our city, uh, in my city, in uh, Yvonne City, in our cities, uh, it is migrants who have uh, so often been on the front line of the pandemic, risking uh, their lives as essential uh, workers. I saw it in the health food, waste, and mobility sector, for instance. During the lockdown, of course, I, I was not in lockdown. It was only on the two Milanese uh, around the city, and I saw it. And many migrants uh, cleaning uh, the city or working for, for, for the citizens. So now, now, to ensure that no one is left behind, we know we must champion policies that invest in a just transition to an inclusive economy and correct long-running environmental and social injustice through the creation of new decent green jobs for all workers. This is why we believe uh, 
the time for dialogue between mayor and cities across the two continents could not be more opportune, strategic, and urgent. The COVID the pandemic has affected us all, and we may all have been interacting from the early days, sharing lessons, supporting each other, and driving innovation. Ultimately, learning from each other to better protect our citizens. Now, we bring this experience and knowledge to this dialogue. We build on the networks and partnership we have forged in the years to ensure that together we can tackle the complex reality of people moving from and on, sorry, to and from cities within and across our two continents. This will be key to help deal with the pandemic, uh, with the economic uh, impact of the COVID pandemic, which uh, will uh, have profound effects uh, across Europe uh, and Africa. It will affect uh, employment prospects, especially for our youth. And again, I am uh, I'm working on, on this specific issue because before the pandemic in Milan, we had an employment rate around, uh, let me say, six, seven percent, that I, I cannot say it is physiologic, but I mean, uh, let me say at least acceptable. Now, or probably we, we are uh, already around 10 percent. So, and, and in this transition, it is a real uh, risky issue for, for, for the main cities. So we can uh, no longer shy, shy away from these realities. And the reality is that uh, the realities are that cities are at the front, uh, at the forefront on all uh, of these grounds, tackling uh, crisis, but also making the most of opportunities to change and adapt to new and better ways of living and work. The dialogue happens at a very strategic time. This is because 2021 will be a key year for international cooperation, especially for Africa and Europe. In terms of climate action, the COP26 process, co-hosted by UK, the UK and Italy, will tell us if we are finally ready to get seriously about the climate crisis. The UK will chair the G7 and Italy the G20. And uh, we look uh, at the interaction between uh, the two for innovative uh, opportunities and partnership. And most important, the AU and the EU will come together for a much expected high level summit that will determine the future relationship between uh, the two continents. Here, cities are ready to play a key role by demonstrating in practice the connection between. Uh, local action and global policies. And again, this is a fundamental point. We cannot do it alone. We need a relationship uh, between the city, but also a strong connection with, with international institutions, with the Europe in, in our case, uh, with our government. So otherwise it is impossible, but we must play our role because my migration continues to be an unresolved issues in the relationship between our continents. And unless we make some progress in the months ahead, this <coughs> will affect the out outcomes of the EU and AU summit next year. Our mayor, like Sawyer, and I, and our, and our fellow mayor, want and can contribute to make the summit a success. The vision and the practical action that the dialogue will support add much value to us. Our partnership for equals can demonstrate how pragmatic alliance can be forged across the two countries and crucially how they can deliver on the ground. So now let me pass it all to my colleague, Mayor Ekisoli. Thank you. So um, taking on from what my colleague Pepe has said, 
um, I want to really focus in on the practical aspects because I think, um, Angela, your question was um, around what makes this different um, mm -hmm. as a as a as an initiative, um, and you know the. The, the, if we come back to the negative perceptions around migration, um, the idea that you've got people who are coming to other people's companies, countries to take their jobs, to take their housing. I mean, these are the narratives, these are the things that you know come to the forefront. And then, as I mentioned, from the other side of the um, of the Mediterranean, Mediterranean or Atlantic. Um, you also have the real challenge of the structural drivers of migration. So I don't want us to lose sight of that. Um, I often say that people move in pursuit of happiness. Everyone is looking for a better life, a better opportunity. Um, and whether that is catalyzed or, uh, um, because they are having to flee from conflict or from climate, or simply because they can't find a job at home. Um, and therefore they feel that they, their, their chances are better abroad. It's a tension sometimes, and what the mayor's might dialogue is wanting to do is to be real about that. It's a tension from the perspective of the fact that everybody has the right to be welcome. Uh, and, and Milan is a great example, um, and Mayor Pepe is a great example of how he is welcoming migrants. But then on the other side, you also want migration to be about choice for people to not feel that they must go because they have no options at home. Um, and that is sadly um, one of the things that comes out when you look at research on the drivers of migration. You know, I have personal experience of speaking to young people who have gone on what is known in Sierra Leone as the Temple Run, which is, you know, it's a name after a video game where they've gone through the desert, they've gone through North Africa, trying to get to trying to get to the Mediterranean to cross over to Europe. Um, and in, in many instances, as, as, as uh, Mayor Pepe said, you know, lives are lost. People end up in jails in North Africa. They end up dying in the desert. Women are raped. So it's a, it's a torturous journey. Um, and if one is doing that because one feels you have no choice, then the mayor's dialogue is also about how do we practically address these issues? How do we practically work together as, as cities to to build on the political engagement, which has been mentioned, bringing together not just the city leaders, but you know, important uh, um, policy makers in the AU and in the EU. Um, how do we use knowledge and policy to make sure that di the, the direction is actually of, of discussion is going the right way, but significantly, and this is probably my best bit about the mayor's dialogue, how do we work on partnerships so that we can innovate and take new and old city initiatives, which are addressing these things practically. When I say these things practically, I'm talking about investment in jobs. I'm talking about it not just being about, can we provide language schools for people who come to Greece or to Italy? No, can we invest more? you know, in the cities of origin, um, in housing, in, in employment, in the green economy, um, as we come out of, of COVID and we're going into this reset. And how do we do this collaboratively so that we're sharing knowledge? So for example, with Milan, um, we are looking at practical um, programs of investment in Freetown in the, 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 the fashion um, because that's Milan's strength. We're talking about knowledge sharing in waste management where we've actually as a city made significant strides. So it's seeing, you know, how do we build alliances where our focus is about ensuring that not just the cities um, of, of destination are welcoming, but that we're really also talking about investment into cities of origin. So that question of migration, which we know can and should be a positive when it is a migration of choice and not of desperation. I'm really ensuring that people have opportunities. So why is it different? What would we say is different about the dialogue? It's about practical solutions. Um, a lot of conversations have been going on for many years. Um, the compacts on migration tell us that there have been bodies of work done, but we need to move to implementation. And we know that that implementation is best done, most effectively done at city level. And the mayor's dialogue is about practicalizing um, these conversations so that we can actually see um, the benefits that both 
cities on both continents can derive from sharing information, working together, and ensuring that pathways are safe, but they're also, they also go in both directions. Thank you very much, uh, both uh, Mayor Saki Sawyer and Mayor Sala. I think you have provided ample evidence of the uh, why we need this mayor's dialogue now, and uh, especially how it is different from other platforms and also how it builds on uh, other conversations going on in also on other themes. Let me bring in now uh, the other two speakers we have today. So we have Marta Foresti, who is the director of ODI Europe and leads the ODI's Human Mobility Initiative. Um, she's managing the Institute of Engagement of Migration at global, regional, local level. Uh, she's also a visiting senior research fellow at the Institute of Global Affairs at the LSE, and she's also a member of the editorial board of the Journal of Migration Policy and Practice, as well as the board of um, for causa.org. So um, let me turn first to Mark, and then we will have also uh, give the I'll also give the chance to Professor Rigberda to respond um, to the. Um, to what was presented by the mayor. So Marta, um, you're working closely with the mayors. Um, how will this dialogue work in practice? Um, who is involved and what will happen next? Thank you, Angelo, and thank you, Mayor Sala and Mayor Akisoya for sharing your vision for the dialogue with all of us. I'll give you a taste of what's happening and what is going to happen in the next few months, and then I'll um, end with maybe a reflection or two on what uh, we've heard from the mayors. So ODI is an independent think tank based in London and together with the Mayoral Migration Council that Mayor Akisoya mentioned and the Bosch Foundation and Open Society Foundation is supporting uh, the dialogue and the initiatives um, uh, leading up to it. Um, at the moment there are about 20 cities uh, across Africa and Europe who are involved in the dialogue from Dakar, Kampala, Kigali, who has recently uh, joined the initiative, Helsinki, Lisbon and Amsterdam, and many others um, are working together towards the dialogue. The dialogue is a real dialogue. So the mayors of these 20 plus cities, we hope that others in the course of 2020 will join us, will meet in Milan. Uh, we very much hope that they will meet uh, in person. Um, uh, thus far, as many other things, uh, this dialogue has been very much a digital um, initiative, and, and I'll share a reflection on that in a minute. Uh, but the mayors will meet um, in Milan, um, and um, Mayor Akisoya mentioned um, some of the very practical and concrete initiatives that the mayors and the cities are working towards, and at that point they will pen a letter to the residents of their cities, but they will share their commitments to how, what they're going to do together to address the realities of human mobility in these cities that, as we were reminded, um, are often portrayed as obviously cities of destination and origin on the two continents, but in practice, they actually all share the experience of being destination, transit and origins. People from, you know, from ancient times move to cities, from cities, spend times in cities. So the reality of your mobility is a reality of urban living. And so the spirit of this is also to share some of these experiences. Um, I mentioned digital engagement. I want to say it because you know these days that's what we're all doing, but it's not simple. Um, we uh, the idea you know the, we started the two mayors started or came up with the idea in the summer of 2019. We began working on it in early 2020, just before COVID struck. And to my mind, the fact that we're still at it and we're in fact making rapid progress towards the dialogue is a testimony of the fact that even without being able to meet and make progress face to face, um, things are uh, moving fast. So in what ways are they moving fast? The cities involved in the initiatives are working together towards partnerships, innovative partnerships, so either learn from each other, but also do things together. Uh, Mayor Akisoya mentioned the fashion industry in Milan and Freetown and Amsterdam actually are involved um, in this um, in this partnerships that is being developed. The cities of Maputo, Bristol and others are beginning to um, develop some um, collaborative work on housing and addressing the reality of housing for urban residents um, from different parts. Uh, there is a lot of interest to work on the cultural in industry and exchanges in that sector and very practical um, domains like, for example, uh, urban solid waste management where issues of growing and rapid um, um, you know, demographic uh, in, in, uh, changes in cities pose some 
some, some challenges that cities can share. The idea is that these partnerships will be, will allow the cities to test new ways of working that will range from learning from one another to collaboratively working, for example, on skills partnerships and opportunities for training and job placements. And the proof of the pudding, as they say here in London, will be very much that innovative financing uh, will support some of these initiatives. And so um, by coming together in this dialogue, the mayors and the cities will reach out to public and private actors that are interested in collaborating with the, with the initiative and dialogue. And for all these reasons, it's so important that the dialogue builds on existing networks, existing relationships between cities that this can build up and further amplify the impact of. Um, in between, sort of, you know, throughout the process, the cities have begun to meet, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, digitally. And so from all of those cities, there are very committed um, policymakers and public servants who are working together to uh, develop these partnerships, to reach out to the institutions. We heard about the African Union um, uh, that now is working closely with Freetown, um, the process leading up to the summit, or the eu EU summit, which is now being delayed as a result of COVID, like many other things. Um, we're looking at COP, uh, Youth COP will be held in Milan at the beginning of September. So there'll be plenty of opportunities for actual policy engagement and for cities to have a say on these international uh, processes. So it's practical solution to work on the ground combined with policy influencing on um, processes that matters to all of us and that will have real consequences for those of us living in cities. Let me finish with two reflections. The first, today we heard that the World Food Programme has won the Nobel Peace Prize. And that's a reminder of how important is international collaboration, international cooperation, particularly in times of COVID. And yet, I'm sure a number of you online um, have shared some frustration on the way in which uh, the international systems work, the extent to which it can continue to fuel and foster international cooperation. We've heard um, how many times um, leaders of the world struggle to come together to cooperate in an effective manner. Um, and the systems that we have for international cooperation need some rethinking, some modernizing, some innovative ideas. But this is what this dialogue is actually doing. The cities, the mayors are showing the way um, and they've done it with this dialogue, but many others, both Mayor Sal and Mayor Rakisoy are at the forefront of a number of initiatives that sees mayors stepping up to the challenge of international cooperation. Um, and so there is a real need and I'm really struck. I mean, I spend you know, the last 20 years of my career in and out of international institutions. And every time now in the last six months that I mentioned this dialogue, there is a genuine excitement about the fact that the mayors are coming up with a different way of working, a different method that actually facilitates rather than hinders working together and actually getting things done because I think we can all say that not all international processes are famous for what they achieve in practice. In the end of my very final um, reflection, this dialogue is about all of us. And this in the context of migration really matters because we are really stuck with a narrative that is about us and them. It's us, the citizens, and them, the migrants and the refugees. When it comes to people who live in cities, it is about everyone who is an urban residence. It is about all of us. It is actually about me. I'm Milanese born and bred, and I'm today sharing a screen with the mayor of my hometown. I'm a Londoner by acquisition. I'm a dual national of it Italy and Britain, purely because Brexit had to, you know, had to make me do that choice. I'm an LSE alumna. I'm a very privileged migrant, in other words. I want everyone else to have the same opportunities I had. And those opportunities, even for us Europeans in the UK, are diminishing day by day. And so if with this dialogue, we can do something to stop this negative narrative of us and them, and we get the first choice, we get the vaccines, we get the jobs, and they continue to suffer. We're not gonna get any you know, much, you know, much very far. And so this dialogue is really about charting a different path towards a way of considering the reality of the fact that people move, have always moved, will continue to move to and from cities. And so we better get on with finding practical ways to make that movement a choice and an opportunity rather than sometimes a tragic journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marta. Um, also from uh, your viewpoint, how the dialogue is actually viewed in the global context and 
um, also compared to other initiatives that are uh, ongoing. Let me now turn to um, Professor Ricky Burdett. Um, professor Ricky Burdett is a professor of urban studies at the LSE and is also the director of Urban Age and LSE Cities. And he's a member of the Mayors of London um, Cultural uh, Leadership Board, former council member of the Royal College of Art and trustee of the Norman Foster Foundation. Uh, he was the director of the Venice International Architecture Biennale and uh, curator of the Global Cities Exhibition Tate Modern London. Alongside his academic activities, Burdett also acts as a consultant to national city governments, private companies and philanthropic agencies. Now, uh, Professor Burdett, um, we are keen to hear in a way your reaction to these new initiatives. And if you can help us a bit place this initiative in the broader policy landscape, we see this playing an increasingly central role globally. Well, if I start by just reminding ourselves of something that perhaps is obvious to those of us on this panel, but not to everyone else, is that um, 2.5 billion more people, 2.5 billion more people are going to be moving into cities in the next 30 years, many of them in Africa and Asia. And that is partly because of natural birth, but a lot to do with migration from um, uh, rural to cities, but also between countries. And I, when one thinks of your question, Angelo, of, you know, why now? Why does this dialogue matter now? Because some of the structural issues that uh, Mayor Sala and Mayor Akisoy have talked about are either are certainly going to be there unless something changes. And that's why I think this initiative is particularly interesting. I think you already heard from both mayors that there's an insistence on the practical solution, what the city can do. But I want in a moment to slightly provoke both of them to say, well, what can't you do? What, where are the frustrations? What is actually, what are the barriers? But I think, uh, Angelo, to respond to also your question of what else is out there and why is this possibly different, there, there are four, five, six different organizations uh, which deals with uh, uh, comparing notes, let's say, among cities. There's um, the City Lab organization where uh, uh, Mayor Akisoy and I were on a panel with Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, Beppe Sala there, was there a few years earlier in Paris, which is quite generic. Let's say it's about cities getting together and talking about many issues. Um, there is um, the metropolis organization, which is the bigger cities uh, of the world, capital cities and others, which meet up as part of the United Communities and Local Government Organization, a very broad organization. And there was even uh, an initiative which is no longer really strong uh, led by the now late Ben Barber, who believed that if mayors could rule the world, everything would be okay. Now, I actually don't believe that, and I'm sure that the two mayors may also have a view on that. And that thought about actually creating a mayor's world parliament, uh, which would might solve issues. Now, what we've heard today from, in fact, all three speakers is a much, much more focused um, approach. And what has struck me in hearing what I've just heard is that it's not only a thematic issue on one of the fundamental issues of humankind, the question of migration and dignity, but also that it has a strong moral um, undercurrent. I think uh, Beppe Sala repeated rightly the notion that, you know, the concept of growth and solidarity are not just the heart of his campaign, but I think a shared common ground amongst all the cities involved. So I think that is very particular, Andrew, in terms of this initiative. The second point, which leads, let's call it to perhaps my uh, provocation or just simply questioning, is the fact that, uh, of course, it's good for cities like yours to talk to each other. Um, but in the end, there are some limits as to what you can do. And Yvonne was already, I think, uh, referring to that. Yes, uh, issues of um, dealing with people moving into your city land on your doorstep, but who pays for the housing? Uh, who actually provides for the national policy for infrastructure? Who is actually in charge of health or schools? And I think uh, Milan knows about these issues on the ground. And that really comes down to two or three sort of big issues, which I think are um, 
cutting across the themes of migration, and that is the control of services. Uh, who can control uh, the schools, who can invest in them, and where do those conflicts of priorities, let's say with national government or in the Italian case, even provincial or regional priorities, how do you actually uh, manage those interfaces? I think would be interesting to hear. Because the other two or three points which are coming up, Angelo, right now with the COVID debate of whose jurisdiction, who's in charge actually of the areas and where these interventions happen is not clear. I mean, just think of the, the mess yesterday between Governor Cuomo, the great hero of the states of America, and Bill de Blasio identifying on two different maps at the same time of day which are the new hotspots of COVID and which schools or bars or rentals had to be closed. The two maps did not align because they had different forms of actually um, putting data together, not to mention developing a policy. And we've heard the debate literally these days as we speak. The mayors of Manchester, uh, the mayors of Liverpool, the cities in the north, are highly worried about impositions being made without anyone knowing on the ground that are taken in London miles away. So I think those tensions are very interesting. Just ending up with the London question, the mayor of London today is forced into making decisions about public transport with a five billion pound debt, five billion pound debt. Beppe Sala knows this perfectly. If no one is using public transport, who's going to pay for a system? And how does that impact on creating jobs, particularly at this moment of ur urban uh, e economy and urban recovery? One could go on with many of those examples. But I think why this initiative is so significant is, again, because it focuses down on a narrow theme with enormous and global consequences and with a notion of practical solutions. But on the other hand, I don't think you can escape in this debate dealing with these different levels of tensions of governance, whether it's regional versus uh, local, whether it's national versus uh, municipal. And therefore, I'd be interested to know how your um, network and your debates will also bring that into the discussion. Thank you very much, Professor Boudet. Um, I think I will now give the chance actually to the mayors um, to respond if they would like to respond or we can move to the Q&A. Um, I don't know if Mayor Aki Sawyer, yeah. Yeah, um, thank you both Marta and Ricky for, for your uh, interventions. Um, I want to just pick up on the last point that Ricky made with regards the um, the conflicts, the, the you know the, that interface on the um, in terms of the governance structures, you know you gave the example of of London with transport, New York, um, where it was a state city. Um, in the case of London, it's the national government. In the case of Sierra Leone in Freetown, this is something we face daily, um, and I know that it's it's a common problem all over the world. I think what I'd like to say is that there has to be a recognition that this is not going to go away. You know, um, in, in the context in which, you know, governance is done globally, it will be messy and it's going to stay messy because we're talking about conflicts of power. Um, and it becomes even more complicated when the, the political party dimension comes into it where you've got, you know, a Republican and a Democrat, or in my case, you know, opposition mayor, um, different to the central government, just layers. But the, the, I think what we are seeking to do with the mayor's dialogue is the way that I've approached the challenge of Freetown. When I chose to run for office, um, I was very, very many times asked, what was I gonna do with this total mess? Um, and I, I would answer back, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I'm not convinced the elephant will ever get fully eaten, but there is absolutely no point in giving up because of the scale of the problem. Um, and we are never going to have a clean, tidy, neat textbook style form of governance. In fact, with the political and economic dynamics post-conflict, 
it's probably going to be more messy than, it, than it's been before. But organizations or, or, or initiatives like the Mayor's Dialogue um, can be very helpful in allowing synergies and collaborations with those who are like-minded in order to continue to push forward on a trajectory that we feel um, is going to be important for the development of our city, our cities and our residents. Let me give the Freetown example, um, which is my example of the transport. And it's so, so fundamental. I think it was on our recent call, Ricky, that this we talked about planning. And I would say that in a city where our population has grown by two and a half percent times, not two and a half percent, two and a half times in the last 25 years, and continues to grow, mainly rural urban migration, which is a result of national policies because it requires investment out of the capital. It requires jobs out of the capital. You know, mining companies have been shut down because of disagreements with the national government. The impact is thousands of people with no jobs moving to the city. They are moving into a city where land use planning and building permit is supposed to be, like in pretty much everywhere I know in the world, devolved to the city. But in our case, it's held by the Ministry of Lands. So I don't, I don't plan, currently plan the city. People are issued building permits. We see three stories, five stories, six story buildings going up. I have no idea. There's no communication to the mayor. What is that going to mean in terms of sanitation, in terms of traffic management, in terms of the services that we are to deliver? So the pressure on the city and what needs to be done to relieve that pressure are both things which currently are outside of the mandate of the city. But according to the law, land use planning and building permit issuance is a city function. So what do we do? We act like a broken record. We keep on, keep on, keep on lobbying, advocating, uh, reminding governments of their responsibilities. And we're now in the process of having that handed over to us. It's not simple. And I don't believe the mayor's dialogue is trying to put forward some kind of panacea that's gonna solve the problems of the world or of cities or of migration. It's not. We live in a very, very chaotic, politically uh, um, and economically, and COVID is not going to make it any less so, particularly with the pressures of climate. But what we need are initiatives, collaborations, uh, um, opportunities for us to collectively find those avenues where change can be done, where bits of the elephant can begin to be eaten. Thank you Over. very much. Mayor Sala. Yes, it is true. It is clear that uh, sometimes we are disappointed with the decision, decision cam coming uh, from our government or better with the inactivity of our governments uh, and, um, and sometimes we are disappointed with the public uh, debate uh, at national level and you know that uh, for instance in my country but not, not only in my country uh, the public uh, debate and the and even the way to get consensus is based on the, some fundamental factors but also, let me say, very limited factor. One is uh, landing in, in our, on, on our coast. The second one is uh, security, when the right time tend to, to put together migration and, uh, and security. Now, let me tell, uh, um, tell you one thing, which is uh, a specificity of my country, because uh, you know that the Second World War ended in the 1945. Now we are in 2020, so from the end of the Second World War, 75 years. In 75 years, in Italy, we had 71 governments. So my point is that uh, to solve complex situation, it takes time. It is possible. But having time, 
at city level, my mandate uh, go on, goes on for five years or 10 years, which is a sufficient time to practically work on uh, an issue like migration. And mainly now with this uh, pandemic and the, it is clear that it is necessary to rebuild uh, the city. Now, being mayor of Milan, have I to continuously look to the upper middle class or even to young people, even to the foreign born residents who normally are in condition to push, are in condition to risk, are in condition to project a different future. So this is why it is fundamental that mayor try to be even more independent. In some ca case, like, like uh, in my case, I'm not a member of a political party, which is, uh, exposes me sometimes to, let me say, a weaker position because I don't have a political party behind me in order to, to support me in my, my political battle, battles, my political fights, but I'm independent. I'm more free to have a dialogue with my citizens and to tell them, please consider the migration issues as a global problem. And, uh, and we can try together uh, to find uh, a solution. That is the, I mean, let me say the, the reason for which now the mayor activity is becoming even more important. Thank you very much, both uh, Mayor Aki Sawyer and Mayor Sala, and also to Marta Foresti and uh, Ricky Burdett. Uh, I think we are now entering the last part of our conversation today. Um, and I would like actually to take the opportunity to open the floor um, to questions from the audience. Uh, we have received a lot of excellent questions um, in our Q&A uh, chat function here. Uh, and I'm helped by the fact that actually you as an audience could actually rank those questions uh, in terms of both of relevance interest. Now, the two questions that have been ranked the highest um, actually cover what also Professor Burdett in a way was already asking the uh, two mayors. Um, so on one hand, uh, again, what is the role of cities uh, in the more you know, global dialogue of migration, if there has been any kind of pushback? The second one more um, on, uh, uh, instead on the narrative of migration. So I'll ask the first question by Janina Sturner, who is at, uh, um, a research fellow at the Center for Area Studies at the University of Nuremberg. So um, as both mayors are part of the Migration Council, I would be interested to hear what they think, how global migration policy making would change if cities could play an even stronger role in informing and also evaluating policies and agreements at the global, but also regional EU, AU level. Um, that's the first question. So um, the role of cities in the global migration debate. And the second one is said by Ben Grazda who is actually pursuing a um, Master of Science in Conflict Studies. And um, it's on this question on how do we actually create more positive linkages and uh, communication between residents in origin destination communities? What ideas have you actually tried? What has been successful, unsuccessful? And does this new online reality mean that there is more opportunity to build connections? I probably reserve these last two questions to also Marta and uh, uh, Professor Burdett. Okay. Um, I don't know who would like to start, if Mayor Aki Sawyer, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think the first one was uh, the role of cities. And if we felt that um, having more of a voice. Yes, I think the answer is yes. Um, that is the whole vision of the Mayor's Migration Council, um, to be able to amplify voices of cities, to be able to get us, and not just sort of amplify them in a vacuum, but in a very structured way, um, ensure that, you, so for example, when we were launched um, in December of 2018, that was done the day before um, the Mayor's Migration, the, the global 
Compact for Migration was signed in Marrakesh. So we actually, as the Mayor's Migration Council Leadership Board, we were present in Marrakesh and we had the opportunity for one of our colleagues, it was Mayor Valerie Plant of Montreal to speak at that session and we continue to do so. So we were, we hold our, our, our leadership meetings to coincide with relevant events. So we were at the high level uh, UN um, policy conversations in New York last July. So the MCC is making sure that we are in a very strategic way entering into those dialogues. Now, getting ourselves into those meetings um, needs to go two steps further. One would be um, to be more engaged, and this is what the, the organization is working on, being more engaged in shaping the policy, not just commenting on what has been done so that advocacy continues. But there's another step which cannot be overlooked, and that's the importance of finance. So it's one thing for there to be um, um, objectives set out in a compact, uh, you know, sort of um, uh, statements made about what needs to be needs to be done um, in order to uh, uh, improve on the human rights of migrants, of children, for example. But if if all of those are made in statements in documents at national level, but there is no mechanism for funding to move down to the cities that are going to receive those migrants, that are going to have to house them, make provision for schools for children, or indeed, in, and when we talk about objective two, to address the structural drivers of migration. Yes, it's written, it's been signed. Now, now what happens next? Has anybody given me any money? No. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's how do we move these? And, and that's what the MMC is about. So it's So yes, there's a significant role, um, but that and that role needs to go beyond the conversation, but to practical implementation. And practical implementation does not happen without finance. And to the second point about um, the dialogue between people, residents in countries of origin and countries of destination, and what's been done so far. So the mayor's dialogue has just kicked off. Um, we'll have our inaugural meeting in March. Of course, a lot of work, as Matt has said, a lot of work has been done by our team members, by the, all the cities that have come on board, um, by our technical partners, um, OSF, ODI, uh, uh, um, MMC, uh, and Robert Bosch, and, and more conversations are going on. Um, we're building, and I think by, very, by the very nature of what we're seeking to do, with the mayor's dialogue in terms of the political engagement, in terms of the partnerships, in terms of the knowledge and policy and the sharing, the, the practicalization, as I mentioned earlier on, um, that communication will happen because the people who are going to be involved, the doing that will happen with the mayor's dialogue is going to be done by residents of those cities cities in Africa and cities in Europe. And when people begin to be doers, ordinary residents become part of this, whether it's the fashion and getting female entrepreneurs in Freetown um, exposed to um, the textile in the, or the, the fashion industry in Milan, giving opportunities for, for export, import, that dialogue is happening with ordinary people. And, 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 and because it's being done in the framework of the mayor's dialogue, because we are not losing sight of what it is we're trying to achieve, those conversations will not just be casual, they'll be very directed so people understand um, that that city, that engagement with Milan, you know, it's part of us building, part of us understanding that we can we can actually improve growth opportunities in our cities by partnering together without necessarily crossing the Mediterranean Sea. Thank you very much, Mayor Sal. Yes, thank you. It, it is clear following um, what the what Mayor Akisoya and the other speakers said that cities uh, bring to national governments uh, and international uh, processes there. Let me call it, uh, politics uh, of getting uh, get, getting things done. Uh, and this is what uh, this mayoral dialogue uh, can contribute uh, to the bigger dialogue between uh, Africa and Europe. Now, as I told you before, the, the, the discourse 
around uh, human mobility is too often focused on the arrival of migrants uh, or on their return home, which, by the way, is not simple. But again, it's uh, from a poly in, on the, the political de debates, it, it appears to be a fundamental uh, issue. Why may I pragmatically look uh, at the integration of migrants in their city? And they have to prepare it. Let me give you an example. Uh, in Milan, for example, we work to ensure that all family reunification processes, and we have uh, thousands of them every year, are well prepared. And that is fundamental. Because in this way, families uh, can function, can contribute, and uh, ultimately can thrive. So again, we are working uh, on that and we will do better, but it is one, uh, one example of the many we are having in practice, uh, putting in practice uh, to modify the situation. And finally, I believe that Mayo have to work on the mentality of the people and the political and social sensitivities of the people. A couple of years ago, in 2018, we organized a, a march along the street of Milano, having uh, together Italians, uh, former migrants became uh, Italian or migrants, uh, and we had uh, 200,000 people along the street, which is uh, incredible, having in mind that my city, residents in my city are 1.4 million. And the, the title uh, uh, of the, the march, the name of the march was uh, Together Without Walls. So again, you see, we have to work on the, the very, very practical uh, things and find solutions. But at the same time, we can have this dialogue with people. And through the dialogue and preparation, of course, and organization, we had this much, and let me say, for days, in all the main uh, media channels in Italy, there was picture of this match, and you can imagine the impact of 200,000 people match. So that, that, that is fundamental. That is uh, the reason for which I feel uh, my responsibility, my duty, more than ever. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Sala. Uh, let me actually give the chance also to Marta to comment on these two questions. Uh, Marta, you have been exposed also to the uh, workings and the drafting of the Global Compact for Migration. Uh, you have seen it before from uh, uh, you know, the usual negotiations point of view of uh, at a very global level dialogue. Um, how, what's your viewpoint on these two questions? Actually, thank you, um, Angela. Let me uh, answer that question of the, the role of cities in global migration. And as you said, also my reflection on my experience in working on global processes such as the Global Compact to the specific geographical reality of this dialogue, which is the relation between Africa and Europe. And there is actually a, there was a question in the chats about asking what will this dialogue bring to the EU AU summit next year? Uh, and that th this is, 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 is actually quite distinct about this dialogue because, I mean, we've seen, you know, I think is, is no secret that globally uh, migration is not an easy um, uh, topic for countries to collaborate and agree on. And um, it's actually really hard between <laughs> Europe and Africa um, for, for a number of reasons. They actually touch on what um, Ricky said earlier about uh, the competence of, of, of nation states. I mean, migrations are, uh, you know, priority of sovereign states, and they typically put migration policies um, it fo typically focuses on border issues, border management. And I think it's fair to say that looking at the relationship between Europe and Africa and what we can expect in the lead up to the summit next year is actually migration is a bit of a stumbling block. Um, the European, you know, the, the president of the European Commission has made her first trip after being elected to Ethiopia, has made a big commitment about wanting to build a partnership of equal between. Um, 
uh, Europe and Africa, uh, there is strong interest also from a number of African states. And yet, if there is one policy area where the two, say, let's say, continents or certainly the regional institutions cannot quite find an agreement, that's migration um, and different priorities, political priorities with, uh, as we all know in Europe, um, a difficulty among the member states to find agreement on, you know, on common policies and, and typically focusing on uh, restricting um, uh, migration to Europe, while on the other side, a number of African countries are looking and asking for legal pathways and visas and mechanisms for um, African citizens to be able to uh, travel to Europe. So what this dialogue brings to the summit, therefore, is, is, is I'm not sure if it's a solution because this is a very big problem, but actually it's nothing short of a fairly revolutionary different perspective that says, if you look at it from a city's perspective, we actually are working together to find practical solutions and what we can do about the fact that people move to cities and move between cities. And therefore, it actually offers to what are at the moment, you know, they look like pretty difficult negotiations between the EU and the EU or the role that migration would play in the summit, actually a different perspective and something that is working on the ground with mayors already coming together in their own, you know, in their own, on their own terms by having created uh, this platform, Mayor Yvonne has mentioned a number of times how important it will be for financing to be part of this. But even there, you know, the 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 you know the vision of this dialogue is also to try to explore different ways of thinking about it. Is there potential for public-private partnerships that can support and fuel some of these innovations that the cities are working on together? And so, what this dialogue brings to regional um, um, uh, policies and also potentially global policies is actually innovative practices that can help break the de de deadlock, deadlock, deadlock that often migration policies become for um, international, um, international negotiations. It will, I mean, we will see in the next few months, uh, uh, you know, what will happen, but there is definitely an appetite from the European Commission. We have heard from Mayor Akisoya from the African Union to actually open a dialogue for cities to come forward with, you know, becoming much more present, vocal, and to offer solutions and practical avenues to try to consider these issues of migration between the two continents and within the two continents in different ways. An important reminder here, there was a question in the chat about the fact that much migration in Africa happens between African cities. Yes, and the dialogue is not a dialogue about migration between Africa and Europe, it's actually a dialogue about human mobility also within Africa and within Europe, and we don't discuss, you know, ever enough about the realities of migration within Europe and how much that's changing due to demographics, due to Brexit, due to all sorts of other phenomena that will change the realities of movement on the continent. So the dialogue is very much between cities, also within Africa and within Europe to work together on intercontinental um, migration. So to the question that I think Ricky uh, um, mentioned earlier about the, the role of states and the role of cities and the realities of the fact that cities will have limited power to change migration policies. Yes, they don't have power to change migration policies. The migration policies are the remit of the nation states, more so than many other policy areas where cities may have a bit more leeway. But that's actually become a bit of a problem for states because it's not as if they, you know, there is, you know, the states are doing it very efficiently or it has created, as we all know, a lot of political tensions. Again, cities come into this from a different perspective, which is one that doesn't engage necessarily about rules of you know, who is allowed through the borders, but much more from the perspective of how do you manage the daily life of city, in residents in cities, including those who are foreign born and happen to be in cities, because as Ricky said, we know now they're only going to increase. So there will be more of them in cities. So again, there is this, is, is a, it's almost like a change of perspective given so much of it is happening around how we all need to think differently in light of what we're learning from COVID. And it's a little bit what happened as Mayor Sala reminded us about the role of migrant workers that all of a sudden, you know, the foreign work has become a vital element of our response to the COVID pandemic. Well, migrants in cities are, you know, are a reality that cities are living with and, and learning to, to manage and handle in ways that can help overcome the whole discussion about whether people want more or less people, you know, migrants to come into their own countries. It's much more of a question of dealing with the people who live in cities, no matter where they're from, acknowledging that that will continue to remain a trend in the future. And so the fact that mayors do not necessarily have power over decision on migration policies 
can actually be an advantage to make some progress in what is otherwise a highly politicized debate at the national and international level, building it from the ground up, not differently from what Mayor Salah mentioned in relation to his own reality and his own sort of role as a non-political, sort of not, mem not, not a member of a political party as a mayor and the leeway that that has created. So let's not underestimate the potential for progress and innovation that this, this and other platforms have on local actions on migration precisely because it's a policy where internationally and nationally we're not making any progress. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if Professor Boudet would like to add anything at this point. Um, the, the only thing is just to, the advantage of having people like Mayor Sala, Mayor Akisoya, with other 20, 30 mayors together, the great advantage of this initiative is the reminder, as we just heard from Beppe a moment ago, that cities are about tolerance. They're actually uh, fundamentally, when they're successful and last for generations, about living with people who are different from you. And I think to keep on pushing that story and remind fellow travelers, other mayors, about the great potential of that is very significant. Thank you very much. So let me move now to the last round of questions. Um, again, uh, there is, of course, some interest on uh, if uh, on this city if this city led dialogue has received already any pushback or from the experience from the mayor's council. But uh, um, I'll, I'll first uh, prioritize another question, which is. How do you actually manage? Um, and this is a question that has come both from uh, Alimatu Dimo, uh, sorry for the pronunciation, uh, Dimo Nekene, uh, who is actually um, a global advocate for the rights of women and girls and founder of a uh, girl at a time based, actually in Freetown, uh, Mayor Aki Sawyer. And she's asking how, since you also, uh, your office has taken special interest in uh, protecting, protecting vulnerable children in the city. How do we make sure, as also Mayor Sala was mentioning, that uh, everybody's sitting at the table in a way, that all the interest parties uh, are sitting at the table and also in particular, the most vulnerable uh, groups have a voice at the table in this council. And this was also a question that we have from uh, Verena Knaus Nerkai from UNICEF. Um, basically, how do we make sure that children and young migrants have, have a seat at this uh, table and can share their experiences and, uh, and solutions? Uh, so that's, the first question I'm going to ask. Thank you. So um, I, I mentioned earlier on, I think it was it was mentioned by Marta, that even a city like myself is also a city of destination, particularly for rural migrants. Um, and um, we have some 74 informal settlements with over 35% of our population living in informal settlements. Most of them, and we did a, uh, we did, um, a survey recently in one of the big ones, most of them, uh, particularly the newer ones, have up to 70% of their residents being migrants. So I, you, we, we have um, these pockets of vulnerability. I mean, I say pockets, there's a lot of vulnerability. Maybe this is pockets of intense vulnerability, even more so, um, where children, young people, um, are, are part of that population? How do we get them involved? How do we get them part of this conversation? So um, the, the idea, what we're working with and what we've fed into this broader dialogue is uh, a, an agenda we call Transform Freetown, hashtag Transform Freetown, which is our three-year plan to transform the city and transform the lives of the residents of the city. Um, and to, to have young, have any voice at the table, um, it's through it's through making that opening opening up at different points in time because you've got to be practical about this. So we had voices, we had um, um, opportunities for engagement um, at the start of the process. We continue to work with some key parties like the Slum Dwellers Association. Um, we we work. Um, with young people, we have a, a focus on women and girls, but I, I saw the question and it was, it was asking about making safe spaces when it comes to things like housing. So I'm coming back to my elephant. Um, these are problems which are, have been 
growing over 20, for over 20 years. We have a target to increase the number of, of um, affordable houses. Um, this, is, this, is, this is coming back to addressing the structural drivers of migration. One of the things that we've, we, we, we note in, in recent conversations and thinking about this is that the migration starts when, because maybe uh, abnormal rainfall there's climate change, there's a failure of crops, people migrate to the city with their small children. You know, if you don't have opportunities in the city, the next thing you begin to think about is migrating out of the city, off the continent. And many times people, I, we, I'm aware of a situation when, where a man, a full family, he sent his four daughters, four daughters, and it cost a lot. So this is again somewhere where the mayor's um, um, dialogue is going to come in. I, I should keep my eye on the clock. Mayor's dialogue is going to come in. Um, it's about these practical, people are spending money, spending money to send, to move out because there's a mafia behind this. Let's not forget about that dimension as well about irregular migration. These are all things that we need, to, we, we, we need to address and we'll be talking about in the mayor's dialogue. But children are particularly vulnerable because they think there's a better future. Long story short, those four girls ended up in Kuwait um, and, and, and were eventually thankfully repatriated through IOM. Um, but what we are seeking to do in answer to the question is systematically improve on education opportunities, job creation opportunities with a green economy, housing, sanitation. The only way you can address these is by building a better city. Um, and I think I better stop there because I know the time is running out and colleagues have to also make contributions. Thank you. I don't know if um, Mayor Sala instead would like to comment on this. How do we actually strike a balance between different interests uh, within a, a same society? You were mentioning before this, uh, this difference between the young people and the middle class or upper class. Uh, how do you achieve a balance in that for all the interested parties? Uh say not not directly concerning the question but in, let me uh, underline a, a fundamental uh, issue now in you in Italy and you in Europe because I mean you know that the political debate and uh, and and even the, the, the public uh, discussion is related to COVID and recovery fund recovery fund is a sort of uh, magic formula because everyone is uh, having expectation now uh, i guess um, we should uh, work on that um, having in mind which is not only gold having in mind that europe is promising us uh, funds but we have to, to be in condition to to use the funds and i mean to even to invest those funds, but it is fundamental now to address, uh, to, for addressing uh, new policies. For instance, the young generation, the, the, the students, we have a problem with the schools in Italy because normally our school were built uh, just after the second world war and in the 50, 60, so after 70 years, uh, they, in time, they have to be reshaped, but in many, many cases, they are not uh, suitable for, for, for these times. So my suggestion to the other mayor in, in Italy is try to, to work on the recovery fund uh, opportunity to address these policies, because now or never, then, it's, it is difficult for me to say that we have an opportunity living in a city and being in the mayor of the city where we had uh, 2,300 deaths for, for COVID. It is not simple to pronounce the word the opportunity, but it, it is an obligation. So we are obliged to, 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 to find a new formula. So again, from my point of view, for, for, for we European mayor, uh, it is fundamental, and we are working on that, to, to, to find new solution and the common solution for the correct uh, use of the recovery fund. 
Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if Marta and Ricky would like to come in at this point for any last remarks. Um, Let me just maybe do a very final practical um, answer, given that there was the question about children and, and young people. I imagine you know the same could apply to other groups that, and the way in which this dialogue will actually reach out and build um, coalitions and a platform for engagement with others. Um, it, it, as Maria Rakisoyer said, this is a process is engaging uh, the fundamental point about this dialogue, it is a dialogue of mayors. And in fact, rather than a table, it's more like, looks a bit more like a Zoom call, but is a, um, is, a, is a dialogue primarily between city leaders. But the idea, the sort of the, 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 the vision is that that will create the political space and the momentum for others to join and for that to become a live platform that collaborates with all actors in cities, both internationally with others that work on um, and, you know, on the issues of migration in, in African Europe, but also within the cities involved with the actors on the ground. So youth certainly have come up a number of times, but also uh, other groups. And this speaks also to the question about whether the digital, like, the digital element of it is helping or not. The one, I mean, it's not helping because we can't come together. And, we, and it's actually quite difficult to create an alliance without coming face to face um, with people. On the other hand, it's much easier, of course, to connect many more people. And so getting you know, cities that do not have the same opportunities to reach out as some of the main cities have. And so creating, you know, creating opportunities for engaging with secondary cities, but also with organizations on the ground that work on different issues and do so collaboratively you know, um, digitally, I think, uh, will create a lot of opportunities. Uh, so watch this space. Um, the, the bet is to get the sort of the political platform on, off the ground in ways that will allow us to um, engage and, inter and, and work with um, a number of others. Thank you very much, Marta. I think uh, this will be a great end to our uh, conversation. Um, I think it's been a great pleasure uh, to have the opportunity for me, um, and I guess for all of you to listen to our panel today. Um, thank to our panel actually uh, for taking part uh, from Mayor Aki Sawyer to Mayor Sala to Marta Foresti and Ricky Bourdet. Um, I think, and also thank you uh, to the audience for attending. I had actually one of our audience member saying, uh, um, since this is an, an initiative about actual implementation rather than just discussion, probably rather than calling it dialogue, we should call it joint action, uh, um, mayor's joint action. And I think it's, it's totally true. Um, I think this is, we learn how you know, cities can play a role uh, in this broader global context on uh, the on human mobility um, and also how cities can change effectively the narrative until now on uh, on migration um, and I think th by being uh, as well inclusive and uh, also trying to address also the needs of the most vulnerable uh, groups um, so thank you again to all the speakers and to the audience um, our beyond Eurocentrism event um, series continues with our next event actually on Monday 12th of October um, young people and anti-racism -ra whose lives matter in Europe and uh, we look forward to seeing you numerously also the next event but for now let me thank all of you for taking part and see you soon <laughs>